Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Absalom Absalom by William Faulkner. This has to be the most challenging book I have ever read because of the way it is written. That being said, I like the story and I found the style very original. This is the type of novel that if you are not into the story, you might be unable to finish it. So who is this book for? If you are used to reading authors who write long sentences such as Charles Dickens, Angela Carter, and Virginia Woolf, you will survive this novel. If you like reading a story with lots of stream of consciousness, if you like poetry, if you like history, you will like this book. So what's up with the form and the style? This novel is very poetic. Faulkner tries to imitate the way that people think and that his characters speak. So Faulkner rarely uses punctuation. That's what makes this novel so difficult to read. Guinness World Records actually awarded Faulkner for writing the longest sentence in literature. And that sentence is in Absalom Absalom and it contains 1288 words. So at one point, this gets extremely overwhelming. So how do you even read this novel? I'm gonna tell you how I did it. The first thing is the mindset. Every time I opened this novel, I imagined that I was reading po prose poetry. The language and images Faulkner uses are very evocative. And there's also lots of figurative speech, so you will not have a problem doing that. This is also not a novel you can read in small periods because it is difficult to get into the flow of the prose. What I did was that I sat and I read one chapter at a time, which took me, each one took me two hours and a half. And mind you, I am a very slow reader, so it might take you less than that, but I never read more than one chapter per day because this is very dense. I also took my time to read and to reread when I didn't understand something. Another thing that I found useful was knowing the plot in advance. And I have no trouble with this because I usually hate plot twists. Unpredictability gives me anxiety, so I usually don't read for the plot. I found this very useful with Faulkner because it allowed me to focus on the themes. It also made the reading experience more enjoyable because I wasn't trying to connect the dots. Absalom Absalom has to be the best example of the Southern Gothic. It has the American Civil War, outcast characters, a family curse. It has the house as a reflection of the family's moral decay. It also has a few elements of the grotesque. It has incest as a symbol of legacy corruption. And there is a haunting as well. Not supernatural, but it is strong enough to follow the characters throughout decades and to follow you as a reader once you finish the novel. As you already know, I am terrible at summarizing things, so I'm going to read the synopsis. Absalom Absalom is Faulkner's epic tale of Thomas Sutton, an enigmatic stranger who comes to Jefferson, Mississippi in the early 1830s to wrest his mansion out of the muddy bottoms of the North Mississippi wilderness. He was a man, Faulkner said, who wanted sons, and the sons destroyed him. So Sotpen is basically an evil version of Jay Gatsby. Sotpen sets out to create a design, which is basically a legacy of power. He wants money, power, a house, slaves, and a bloodline. As you read, you realize that Faulkner turns Sotpen's design into a theogony. Sotpen's legacy is a theogony, but also the other characters interact with the family story as if it were a myth. The novel illustrates how we create meaning when we interact with history and stories. It shows us how myths and tales evolve, but also how we appropriate stories by interpreting them and retelling them. For me, this is one of the most haunting elements of the novel and it's something that I haven't stopped thinking about. We never get a first account of the events. Everything we learn about Sutpen's story comes from other characters. The only character present at the time is Rosa, but she was very young and her version of the events is very one-sided. The main character who is telling the story is Quentin, and he got the story from his father, who got the story from Quentin's grandfather. Quentin's grandfather knew Sutpen 
but I wouldn't say they were friends. Every character tells a story through its own lens. Each interpretation is unique, and most of them are trying to fill in the blanks by imagining and speculating about what happened. What makes this so haunting to me is that this novel made me realize how people take their stories to their graves when they die. We might think we know a person's story, but only the person who lived the story knows what actually happened. Once you're gone and people begin to interpret and retell your story, that story will stop being yours. This has also made me consider my ancestors' stories and now I try to be more mindful whenever I talk about them. Not that Satpin deserves any respect, by the way. <laughs> there is also something very interesting about the way Faulkner conveys the laws of innocence theme. Satpin comes from a community where there's no inequality. Everyone is poor, but the place is isolated, so Satpin doesn't know that people live differently in other places. Satpin loses his innocence when his father decides to move. I think the family begins to work for a plantation. I don't, I don't remember if it's a farm or a plantation, but I think it's a plantation. So here the family is marginalized and Sotpen discovers what social inequality feels like. He sees for the first time slaves, servants and wealth. After experiencing rejection when he's not allowed to go inside a plantation's house, he has this sort of epiphany where he realizes that this social inequality is good because through this he can attain power. If he has power, no one will mistreat him again. He also thinks he has what it takes to succeed because he is a man and he is white. So all of his actions are going to be driven by entitlement and resentment. So what is this story about? I think you can come up with uh, different interpretations. To me, it is about how the American dream is built on exploitation, slavery, racial, social, and gender inequality. But the story is also about how the patriarchy is bound to crumble because miscegenation happens one way or another and the intersectionality white men created will eventually bite them back in the butt. The paradox is that Sutton relies entirely on people he doesn't care about to attain and maintain his power. It doesn't work because the person in charge needs his subordinates more than they need him, and he is the only one who is getting something in exchange. For a society to endure war and crisis, People need to treat each other like equals. A system that relies on divisions to subsist will not last. I still have so much to learn from this novel because it is too dense, so I will reread it in the future. I will also read The Sound and The Fury very soon because I love Absalom, Absalom and I want to read another Faulkner novel. If you feel like reading this novel, please read the trigger warnings first. There's nothing explicit, but there are many things that will make you feel uncomfortable. I don't know which gothic novel I'll be reviewing next, but I recently received a Frenchman's Creek by Daphne du Mouhi, and also Seven Gothic Tales by Isaac Genesson. So perhaps it will be one of this. So that's it for today. I wish you a wonderful week, and do let me know if you have read Faulkner. Take care, bye!